Hello, hello, testing. Hold on, actually, let me do a practice. Good. I'm Max. Yeah, go Should ahead. Should I say hi? Yeah. I'm Max with Colorado Home Cooling and Daylighting, right here in Denver, Colorado. Nope, 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 nope. The truth is blanked. There we go. <laughs> I'm here today to teach you everything you need to know about your whole house's ventilation. Oh, terrible. What do I do with my hands? Don't touch your face. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm Max with Colorado Home Cooling and Daylighting right here in Denver, Colorado. And today I want to talk to you about everything you need to know about your home's ventilation. We install a lot of whole house fans and we know that our customers over the years have heard a lot of misleading information about whole house fans and their home's ventilation. So today, let's set the record straight. Let's bust some myths. So before we dive into myths, let's talk about what ventilation is. So when we talk about ventilation, what I'm referring to are roof vents, uh, ridge vents, gable vents, soffit vents, all of these are different vents that allow air to move freely in and out of your attic. When you have vents allowing air to move freely in and out of your attic, it means that hot air doesn't get trapped as much inside your attic on hot days. What that's really helpful to do is allow all of that heat to escape and help prevent your upper floors in your home from getting heat radiated down from the attic. That idea is really important as we start to talk about whole house fans. Remember, a whole house fan is gonna pull air from your living space up through your ceiling and push it into your attic. That's going to help to expel a lot of hot air very quickly as well as pull fresh air in from the outside to your home. Now this is a huge flow system of air and it's really important that you consider ventilation in your whole house fan system because if you don't have enough vents to push the air up and out of your attic you're going to make your fan work harder and you're going to nullify the effects of the fan by preventing air from escaping. Myth number one. Modern homes are built with all the ventilation they need to support a whole house fan system. This myth we hear all the time. Now, while it is true that homes built in the 90s or later are generally built with more ventilation than they were in homes prior to the 90s, Colorado Code only requires two net square feet of free attic ventilation. For a 2,500 to 2,800 square foot home and a fan appropriately sized for that home, you want seven net square feet to fully let all of that air out. That means you can need as much as five additional square feet of roof fence to allow that fan to work totally properly. So consider this myth busted. Myth number two, a whole house fan will work the same way regardless of how much attic ventilation it has. Call it a misleading sales tactic or sometimes a downright lie, this myth could not be further from the truth. According to Quiet Cool Manufacturing, the leading producer of whole house fans, a fan can only move as much air as it can exhaust. Now, the fan will still turn on if it is underventilated. However, if it's running in an attic that does not have enough ventilation, it will cause severe strain on the motor, potentially causing lasting damage down the road, as well as hampering performance while you run it. So, because a whole house fan's performance is directly tied to attic ventilation and its ability to exhaust air, this myth is busted. Myth number three, you don't need additional attic ventilation because the air will escape your home naturally. This is one of the more outlandish claims we hear way more often than we should. That is, unless your house is actually a tent. The truth is, without proper attic ventilation, that hot, polluted, stagnant air has nowhere else to go and just gets trapped inside your roof. It eventually makes its way back into your living spaces through seams in your insulation, drywall, and other nooks and crannies, ultimately just defeating the point of a cooling system overall. One of the stories we hear from customers who have way underventilated attics while they run their whole house fan is that when their fan is running, they can put their hand over a light switch or an electrical socket and feel air coming out of those places. That's not how these fans are supposed to work and is one of the dangers of underventilation. As a matter of fact, the US Department of Energy recommends that a home has between two and four times the amount of normal attic ventilation to operate a whole house fan efficiently. So, with that in mind, consider this myth busted. Myth number four, adding more ventilation to your home is expensive and unnecessary. 
While adding additional attic fans and vents will increase the upfront price of your initial installation, these one-time costs are a fraction of the cost you might incur when you have to repair or replace an overworked whole house fan system. Not only that, but in many cases, running any kind of cooling system without proper ventilation probably means that you're running that system harder than it needs to, and therefore paying way more in energy bills than you could if you had proper ventilation. Adding up the cost of repair, replacement, and energy bills, the one-time cost of adding ventilation to your system up front is going to be a cost-saving measure for you in the long run. So, that means this myth is definitely busted. No matter what else you hear, if you have a whole house fan, an air conditioning system, or other home cooling system, robust attic ventilation is key to achieving better home cooling, better home health, as well as lasting energy savings. They're affordable, they're easy to install, and the benefits are numerous. So don't take your attic ventilation for granted. I'm Max Williams with Colorado Home Cooling and Daylighting. We are Colorado's top-rated whole house fan and attic ventilation experts. I'll see you next time.